for this podcast. We're proud to partner with Zurich Life and Investments. As one of the last true independent life insurers, Zurich has always believed in the value of advice and the professionals who provide it. They continue to invest in programs such as this one that are designed to strengthen the health and reputation of the advice profession. They're excited about the chance to partner with us, XY Advisor, to help shape the future direction of advice and help make it more accessible to more Australians. To find out more or to check out some of the latest advisor support tools, visit the website or ask your Zurich BDM. We all know education is one of the biggest things in the industry at the moment. It's why we've created the XY Advisor platform. It allows advisors to do short four-week courses. And what we're really keen to do is to get as many awesome content providers in there. So if you're an advisor or a service provider who have put together an awesome solution which can affect change in the way an advisor does their job on a Monday morning, please do put together an application for us at www.xyadvisor.com. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Hayley, it's fantastic <laughs> for you to be here. What's happening? Not much. Very glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me along. And and, and you just, you 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 looked at the headphones and you were like, nah, I'm just not into it. Oh, sorry. Oh, I can hear myself now. Hey! I should know this. I actually have a diploma in radio broadcasting, so I should know this stuff. Are you there actually you serious? Actually serious. That's what I was going to do before I joined Financial Advice. Yeah, radio broadcasting. Yes, but wow. I didn't have the X Factor. <laughs> oh, that's a lie. It's, well, unless it's just it just developed over time. No, yeah. I think it was a hobby. I was 16 years old, so when you have your own community radio show at 16, you're like, that. you're at the top. You're peaking. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Did you play? What What did you did you so Tell me our, you played Blink-182. Oh, no, I would have loved to. So we had a show called The Rewind and we would rewind to a year and play the top 10 of that year each yeah, week. So it was, it was pretty daggy. If I had one now, I'd be smashing Blink-182, Dashboard Confessional, oh, all the good stuff. Oh, I'd listen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's... I should I should know to put these on. See, that's how you know you put one ear off so you can hear outside noise oh, as well. That, only if you're going <laughs> to be like the wicker wicker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know what's up. So, um, so uh, one of the things that we like to do is find out, you know, one of the one of the stories that that our guests uh, have un- up their sleeve, and and you sort of gave a story. <laughs> But there was a there was a little uh, a, sort of asterisk if I was to summarize that says I wasn't sure if I was allowed to share my clubbing <laughs> stories, <laughs> and I thought without a doubt that's the one I won't ask no, about. <laughs> there's too many. There's too many. But one definitely involves Red Foo, so that was kind of fun. He was massive. <laughs> I saw Red Foo uh, when in the year that I was a finalist at the Rising the AFA Rising Star Awards. No way. And, uh, the judging may have continued after hours may have ended up at the Ivy and then Red Foo was there. I don't think I did myself uh, any favours for the judging process for my approach to Red Foo, but needless to say, he uh, he would not dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he won't dance with you. What's your story with Red Foo? I feel like I can definitely only tell parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Um, but I, I think it was a it was like a radio station um, event. We'd won some tickets to go. It was a pool party at the Ivy. Wow. Uh, me and my best friend. It was Ivy, just it was like Christmas time as well. So all like the, that Christmas spirit was in the air. Yeah. Um, and so it was a pool party. So I went down the change rooms. We all put our bikinis on, looking fresh. <laughs> um, and then we go back upstairs. And I was recently engaged at the time, so I took the ring off, <laughs> put it in my bag, and I was like, "That'll be fine. I trust everyone here." Yes. Um, we jumped in the pool. Had heaps of fun. Redfall was going crazy, hopped in the pool with us. We were just, it was heaps of fun. <laughs> Redfall actually, Redfoo actually has a really small part in this story. Like that's the oh, last oh, part right. in the story. <laughs> uh, get back to the bag, um, just pick it up. Everyone got given these these Kiss 106.5 bags at the time. Um, and so we get home. It was a really long day and I'm like, oh, I should put my ring back on. And I open the bag and there's just a pair of shoes in there. And I'm like, these aren't my shoes. Oh, oh no. And I'm like, I asked my best, I was like, hey, can I look at your bag? We just picked up two other people's bags completely. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> best bit was we, we'd become friends with the people that we were sitting next with. So they contacted us and she's like, dude, do you have my shoes? I was like, <laughs> dude, do you have my engagement ring? <laughs> what? Clearly so, you won on that trade. Yeah, yeah, exactly, definitely. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of one of the Red Foo stories. I can't remember what else happened. I feel like that was a lifetime ago compared to now. Well, like, are we talking 2008 Red Foo or 2000? Yeah, so I would have been 19, 20, so 2009. He was, was he was massive. At the time. At that time, yeah. He was. Just shuffling everywhere. Thankfully, like, Every music dude. has progressed, though. 
You, what do you mean, thankfully? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my good gym gear. It was like you know, for the three and a half minutes that I could last on the treadmill, just like. <laughs> but that's like when you go to um, I'm at the gym now, and they have you can pick whatever song you want on, and someone puts like DJ Tiesto on. You're like, what's going on? See, I'm so out of the loop. I don't even know who Tiesto is. I've heard of the name. I would have no idea what he does. Music. Okay. <laughs> okay. That makes things simple. So um, how long, uh, how many years until you just completely take over the uh, the financial planning industry with your just uh, <laughs> radio skills? Oh, gosh. Uh, with, you know, the fact that you're getting mentored pretty much every day by Peter Dantides. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, though, are you loving it? Are you loving the financial advice? Yeah, it's um, – I've been – in the industry for 10 years now. Yep. Um, that's like a blip compared to some people, but I have been able to see it change so much. Yeah. And I've worked in such completely different roles, so that's been awesome. Um, I think I've, as I've just come back off two weeks in Europe, so I'm definitely keen to dominate now. Hell yeah. Um, but in different dominate ways as more, well. I think it's not just about like being a financial advisor, just so much more broadly as well. I'm like in this just phase. Just dominating life. Yeah, just I'm a massive mm. no- knowledge sponge at the moment. So I'm just really hungry to talk to people and keep learning. And um, I was listening to the podcast with Ryan King the other week. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've met up with a co- him a couple of times through the masterminds and I've straight away messaged him and said, let's grab a coffee. Mm. I've got so much to learn. Yeah, he's, so, he's a great guy. Yeah, I think my, my next thing I'm really keen to grow in is like helping admin people mm. really mm. learn a lot. So like the XY community, mm. we're learning a lot because a lot of us are advisors or in that sort of space. Um, I think, you know, in my practice uh, with Peter, we have an absolute gem and her name is Hillary. Uh, she's I've been in, the in yeah she's been in the industry for a really long time and she just knows everything about everything and she's going to retire soon and that knowledge is going to disappear so for someone like her I know she's not the only one um, and I'd love to see you know people joining the industry or starting admin roles learn from someone like her yeah she knows a lot. course on the UXY yeah we, sh- we oh. should absolutely uh, seconda that information make sure it doesn't yeah. disappear into the ether yeah I think even like the the Facebook page like there's so much banter and communication around things that are happening I think for new folks to the to the game there's so much to learn like stuff like third-party authorities oh totally. you only learn that on the fly or by screwing it up a couple of times mm. yes and someone like a Hillary could just teach that I think and most of the best things when it comes to yeah the admin side of financial advice you learn by stuffing it up like of course um mm. Yang my wife you know she yep. she didn't have any background in in financial advice and it's like <laughs> I know and like when she stuffs something up and it's it's something bad not like really like bad for the client or anything but just like a huge pain yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it takes a bunch of time and I'm yeah. like I'm annoyed in the t- in the moment, but then I'm also secretly happy because I'm like, well, that's the mistake. You only made the mistake once. Yeah, that's how yeah, I yeah. learned a lot of the oh, things. Oh, for sure. And you've, you know? you've got to have room for that. Like everyone's got to stuff up to be able to figure it out. Uh, but I think, you know, with some of these companies, especially the legacy products, you can like do it right exactly how they say and it's still stuffing up, yeah. you know. So I think someone like a Hillary could, if you could go to like an XY group and just say, where the hell do I send this thing or something like that, um, even just being able to talk to clients over the phone basically, um, that stuff that you don't have to learn from advisor, it can be from um, from anyone. I'm going to have to put this thing back on the other ear because it's <laughs> There's actually no head. sound out there other than what's in the headphones. So I was just like, trying to be cool, anything. sorry. Ben, ben, <laughs> ben um, I, cool. I, I have to ask, Ben, Did you have you uh, taught Yang the same way that you taught me? So, 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 my first day on the job as a financial oh, advisor. I question the. the that this is exactly of this story. what happens. It's clear as a, a clear, clear day in my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting at the desk, right? And I've spent the last sort of three years as a as a tax accountant. So it's not. I'm not like a rookie in an office, but at the same time, I've never actually worked in advice. But I, you know, I got a I got the diploma and yada yada yada. Had a nice suit. I had a lovely suit. It was my one and only one. Cute. Yeah. And uh, and Ben walks up to my table and he's got this manila folder, this thick, thick, like inch, two, two inch thick manila folder. He just drops it on my desk, boom, and yeah. goes, get that done. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I said, uh, well, you know, into my, to myself, welcome to financial <laughs> advice. So is that, is that how you've taught uh, Yang? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to answer in a word, yes. 
Pretty much. I think, I don't know, you've got to figure it out. But that's what it all is, like especially being an advisor. Obviously there's technical things you've got to know, but I know Peter's really great at this. She goes, figure it out. And mm. you come and ask me. And I think that's part of the learning process. Yeah. You've got to think it through. Figuring it out on the fly. Yeah. You know, that, that's half the fun mm. until you make a mistake. Well, well actually, to, to, <laughs> to that end, what do you find the most fun in advice? Oh, I love talking to people. Like my job is on the phones nonstop and I, I love talking to people, hearing their stories, um, even the times when I just need a quick phone call and half an hour later people are like, oh, and my washing machine broke. You're like, that's great. I've got to make 20 other calls at the moment. So <laughs> um, definitely talking to people. Um, I, l- I love the practice management stuff at the moment. So working with Peter, I get to do a bit of that. Um, and I've always loved that. That's something in the future I'd love to be able to experience a bit more, uh, managing a team of people. Um, God, I couldn't think of anything worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to I'd love to do that stuff. I love all the logistical side of things. Um, I, I think everything. I, I used to be a compliance manager and people were like, oh, you must hate your job. And I actually really <laughs> liked it. <laughs> it was awesome. So, um, A compliance person that likes talking to people. <laughs> I know. That's what's wrong with me? Combination. <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> um, yeah, so what do, I, what do I love about advice? Well, what, what, I mean, what part of it do you enjoy? I mean, and, and you've answered that by saying you like to speak on the phone. Do you, is this sort of uh, your ongoing um, clients that you're speaking to every day or is this yeah. sort of clients to be or? So these are existing clients. So um, the practice I work with, we take over passive clients. Mm. Uh, so people that really don't give a shit about mm. their super, their insurance or their investment. Um, so I've got to uh, look after them on an ongoing basis or randomly. They, I, I don't actually have to call anyone. They they're all calling in. We have such a huge database that they're calling in and from that we're doing reviews and things like that. Um, uh, And the biggest learning curve for me has been able to gain trust Mm -hmm. and educate these people over the phone quickly and In in a first phone call? Uh, In a first phone call, making them feel comfortable that I'm not trying to sell them something Um, and then from there educating them simply without anything in front of them. Um, I, th- I thought I, th- I thought you were about to say, you know, convincing them I'm not going to sell them anything and then I sell them something. <laughs> sell them heaps. I think that's kind of like the the reason why I'm doing really well at it is because I'm not trying to sell them something. You're they're a legend. Al- they're already a client. Like I just yeah, yeah, want yeah. to help them not feel like it's so complex. Awesome. Um, What's the process? So so someone calls yeah. up and, yeah. and, and or, or you call them or however that happens and then you're speaking to them on the phone, you're making them feel at ease, you're considering them, you're treating them like a client. Yeah. And what's kind of, is there a next step? Straight up, the first question is, what are the fees on my super? Right. You're charging me too much. I watched the Royal Commission. <laughs> so when the Royal Commission happened, I was like, I want to die because it was just abusive phone call after abusive phone call. Is that right? Yeah, it was pretty intense, uh, especially because we have a lot of AMP clients. At the time, it was quite intense for AMP. Mm. Um, but after that conversation, um, you know, explaining the fees and then, you know, they all want their super to just be performing better. Yeah. But they don't want to have any risk, right? People don't have any concept, I find, with the with the growth. Like I had a conversation with a client the other day and they had – one person had 150,000, the other person had 45,000. They're like, why is that fund growing yeah. more than this fund? I'm like, well, it's got three and a half times as much money in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, it could do half as well and still make more money. Yeah. But even um, just talking to people about basic stuff, like I had a lady, she's got $40,000 left in her pension, and she's like, my husband just wants to take it out, put it in the bank account. I'm like, if that's what makes me feel comfortable, but this has got to last. So let's look at what we can do. She goes, we just need to put it in high growth. Let's get it growing. I was like, do you have any other savings anywhere else? And she's like, no, no this is it. I was like, would you take this money and go to the casino and put it all on red? She's like, God, no. It's like, so let's not go high growth. You know, yeah, like people yeah, just yeah. aren't. It's just having those conversations in, in a simple way that, you know, just teaching them about obviously risk and return and then, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we follow an index um, investment methodology and, and just teaching people in that space. And I think as I don't talk to people like things are complex, they they feel comfortable and they trust me. So, awesome. And how do you do, – do you have a – like when you're speaking to people for the first time or early on in that journey, however it goes, like a, like a framework that you use to build that trust or build a rapport with people or is it do you just is it different for everybody or um, it's it can sometimes follow the same 
the same path for older people uh well, they don't use email uh, like i i do use some visual aids to set to email out to people so we have a, a bit of a graph that we'll use around asset allocation things like that but um it does follow the same format talking about um talking about investing and you know diversification is important because for these people they know nothing they've They've got a lot of super funds, but they know nothing about investing and and just the having the conversation around what is investing and and what is diversification, what is risk, um, that makes them feel like they now know something. So that and I've taught the, taught them that, so that builds a level of trust as well. Mm. And and from there, I give them a couple of options because really it's it is dictated by them because it's not as complex as what a holistic client might be. Mm. Um, it is a little bit more dictated by the client. Um, when it comes to sort of just their super or just investing. Um, so I, I guess it follows that same format about that educational piece, just talking over the phone, sending them a little bit of information that's highly graphic um, and then having another conversation and it goes from there. So And a lot of our stuff, collecting info, it's all done like via jot form. Um, awesome. and emails. I think so. we use that, do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. We something, something that we've been thinking about moving to is uh, Facebook bots mm. if, you can, if you can get if you can get to a point where you're using a facebook bot yeah i think that that's a very friendly way to ask people the questions you reckon mm, good good point good point it can be like i know i couldn't be asked to call up optus one day so i just went on the the chat box i like the chat and I, like I had a bit of a stigma, like, oh, they're not going to help me. This is going to go nowhere and it was fixed in like 15 minutes so mm, seriously i think there's a bit of a stigma there where it's like because a lot of the websites you go on the chat box pops up, X out straight away. Absolutely. Um, I do that as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But the actual chat for like a service provider, I just like open that up and then I can do some stuff on there yeah. somewhere else. And then it's just a massive turn off for me with those chat boxes are they have that like stock standard. Hi, my name's Mandy, and it's a picture of a Mandy that's clearly mm. like a stock photo. Like give me someone <laughs> I hate real. Anything I that want pops to talk to John. <laughs> like, I like I don't things know. that like I like to, I'm happy to seek out the chat, but I don't like to be don't presented with the chat, like <laughs> stay out of my face, you know. But yeah, no, that's you, my thing. You're, you're, you're a prickly like fellow. Vibe. I just like to, you know, I like what I like. Simmer in I like it. what I want. Don't tell me what I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like you like hip hop. <laughs> I, lo- I love, <laughs> yeah. I love me that gangster rap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jerul Gold on the I door. Wish, I'm just going to ask Joe yeah. if we can take it for a spin after we finish in here. I wish everyone could see the head what he just did. He's like, I love oh, that gangster yeah. rap. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> so this is what you yeah, love speaking to um, to clients, that part of advice. But what do you find, like what are the biggest or biggest, what is the biggest or the biggest um, challenges that you, you face as an advisor? Yeah, definitely one being I'm a young female. Um, I speak to so many people and the question is, how old are you, doll? Um, so that does suck. Um, I don't let it get me down. I think I, I used to, but I have listened a lot to Phil Thompson uh, with his baby face and, and learned yep. a lot from that. Like if you don't let it hinder you, it's not gonna. For sure. And if it does, if it's an issue, then you work something else out. So it definitely used to bother me a lot, but now I know I know enough and I know if I don't that I can outsource so I feel more confident in that space. Um, I think the challenges are around um, – because I speak to a lot of people over the phone, uh, doing face-to-face stuff, I'm not as in that space. I'm hungry to do it, but it's just, it's just not the way our business is set up at the moment. Um, so that will be a challenge um, because I know if I have a meeting with a client, it could take four hours because I'm just chatting away with them. Um, so That's think- my whole business. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> um, but I look forward to that stuff. Like I can't, I can't wait for a time where you just sort of get to sit down with clients. Like I used to work with Deborah Kent. Um, and she's been in the game for a really long time mm. and she's, her business been around for 20 years and some it's of those amazing. clients have been there for 20 years as well. So, um, so impressive. And I got to sit on a, like, that's where I learned advice. Um, yeah. so I got to sit in on those client meetings and just, you know, see the connection and, and, and that was really special. And that's what I really look forward to one day. So. It's that, uh, that progression. I remember like when you're first learning the ropes as an advisor, I remember even the first time I did an authority form, I was shitting myself. <laughs> and, like, the, and it's just the, the call center jockey that just wanted to like, you know, get you off the phone or keep you on the phone depending on who you spoke to and, and it's just <laughs> like this progression of things. So Yeah, absolutely. But I think that the, um, I used to work with an advisor and he used to cop a lot of grief about like being young and – and he was older than I was, but like I don't know. I, I find that 
I think the more that the more that you build your knowledge and and skills and the confidence and stuff, I think that you can you can overcome that barrier generally. Pretty, Absolutely, pretty like it or it becomes like, like that it's not a barrier for sure. And I think the the first couple of times you've got to shit yourself and be super worried about it, only to like it's sink or swim, right? So mm. you've got to get the courage to be fine with it um, and not let age or anything worry and, you. And you can yeah. ham, you can ham it up. Being being, I, I, I struggle to maybe call myself young these days, being thirty five. But um, you, when I was younger and 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 starting out, you you can definitely ham it up. And, and you can pick, like there is an attractive part of having a young advisor yeah. as well, right? Because they're mm. going to be more energetic, probably more interested to prove themselves and do a good job. Um, you know, it, it, there's there's an argument to say that uh, you know they haven't they haven't become stuck in their ways and things like mm. that. So For it, sure. there, there are there are advantages to having a young advisor. And I, I stumbled when when I had my business, I stumbled upon this really weird niche. With, with like the C level uh, executives in Macau uh, casinos, yeah, right. <laughs> it was this really weird thing because um, they were all, as you'd imagine, you know, they, they work in casinos, so they're all sort of a bit party boy ish, you know, even though they're fifty, sixty, and I just became known as this the young the young hotshot bloody financial planner in the in the city and they'd be like all right clay we're going out for beers and and, and then i'd meet a couple more and it was um yeah it was i, I hammed it up i was like yeah right oh well, i'm i'm the i'm yeah. the young guy in this group and you guys are the ones with the money and i'll just make sure you don't bloody ruin yourselves so. absolutely that's one of the best lessons i learned i uh, used to work for bras and things straight after high cool. school and um the one of the best lessons they taught was just fake it till you make it like the reality is you're not going to know all of these bras in here straight away so just mm. pretend you do until you do yeah. and I just have run with that my entire life. You know, if you don't know it, you will figure it out. Like I live in the age of Google and I'm surrounded by people that know stuff. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Absolutely. And and the the older I get is the more I realise that no one knows anything anyway. But that's half the thing is being able to go, we all don't know. Yeah. Let's figure it out. Like yeah, yeah. I think that's part of the connection with my clients. Like they're like, this is so hard and complicated. I'm like, you're right, man. This is hard. Mm. It's only because I've studied it that I know, like, let me help you because this is hard. You should not be expected to do this on your own. Okay. I've legitimately got a question. Hopefully between the three of us, we can figure this out. What's the difference between an ICR and an MER? Management expense ratio, oh. indirect cost ratio. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's what it stands for. But what is the difference? Does one- I think, I think the, the ICR covers all of the fees, so whereas one has the, the ICR yeah. includes the MER. And the other fees. Or what other fees? Is this a trick? Fees? This is maybe a trick because no, they're the not. same thing. No, no, because well, I thought no, they no, are, no. but they're slightly different. No, sometimes no, no. You, you, when you're when you doing a third-party authority, sometimes, not all the time, but you'll ask for the MER and then they'll say, you know, it might be 1% and they'll be like, oh, do you want the ICR as well? And I'm like, yes. This and is why like you go, can you give point- me a rundown of the fees, please? <laughs> and they just list all of them. <laughs> okay, fair play, fair play. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so, so an ICR, wait. Includes the MER would, sure. and, and other yeah. fees, which I'm not sure. But well, that would be like trustee I think definitely fees the, or the, the performance fee. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it includes Ooh, like the super right. these one off super levy Levies, fees that they're yeah. charging. But but yeah, um, that sounds like something you should put in the XY group. I'm, well, sure, I'm sure that one of our amazing BDMs can uh, post a comment under this podcast in the group and and tell us all. It would be lovely to know. It would definitely be lovely to know. So yeah, we're all just faking it then. <laughs> we're literally definitely all just faking, faking it. it. <laughs> Pretty definitely. much. I was like, yep. Hold on. No, definitely faking it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys working on at the moment? Practice management, you mentioned. Uh, lots of different stuff. So we use Infusionsoft. Oh yeah. Um, so it's definitely maxing that out to the best we can to mm. um keep in contact with the huge database that we've got. Um, but I guess the main thing that Peter's sort of working on that we're all focused on at the moment is her keynote speaking. Yeah, so, yeah. That's um, cool. And she's doing Smashing a lot of stuff it. around dreams. So yeah. trying to tailor the advice process to be more focused on like what do you want to do? Like yeah, what is yeah. the what is that weird thing you want to do that you think, oh, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so tailoring it around that because at the moment it the advice process doesn't necessarily suit that. And is that so is that for the existing clients that are like these um Less engaged, like yeah. superannuation-based clients. Is that the is that who you'll be 
like delivering yeah. that that sort of thing to, or is it is it a different market subset or what? Yeah, so to be targeting those people, sort of, I guess like a more membership style approach, um, starting sort of one unit at a time. You know, if it's working on your superannuation, superannuation, or working on your cash flow or investment, mm-hmm. all of that sort of stuff. So doing it a segment at a time, um, but starting with the the emphasis being on what do you want to do? What's that weird thing you want to do that you never thought you could? Yeah. Like think about that because the stock standard approach, especially like in the hills area where I'm from, it's get married, buy a house, have kids. Oh, yeah, it's massive out there. Yeah, it's I got intense. I got family and cookie cutter. Yeah, um, and it's it sucks as well because uh, I mean, I I was in a position where I absolutely wanted that as well. Um, but I think people just forget there's so much other stuff out there that you can do. Um. And it's not just Don't tell me that. That means I've made a massive mistake. Oh, what no, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you lasted until you were like mid thirties till you got married, man. Oh yes, that's right. I'm not in the um. But you've done you other stuff the too. Start the starter marriage. The starter start marriage. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, my life took a pivot. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, nice. I see what you nice. did there. And that's that is good. Yeah, I um I, I went back back many, many, many moons ago in another life and another dozen lives ago. Um I used to play music full time. And oh, oh did you? Mm. Were you in a band? No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I've uh, never heard that. Yeah. And I married a I married a, a girl. Cute. Yeah, so it just didn't work out. Yeah. No. I think that's like the token sentence after you've been married and it doesn't work out. It just didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's actually surprisingly not as uh not as traumatic as you think it would be as a kid and you see parents break up. I, I think it's because we didn't have kids, right? Yeah. Like you didn't have kids, yeah. I didn't have kids. When are you becoming a dad? I got two cats. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just I'm taking the steps. You know, that's my that's my letter of authority phone call. I'm working up to the phone call after that. We'll figure it out. That's pretty cute. Yeah, little cat babies. They're our fur babies. Yeah, they, they go okay. It's like it's. They're pretty I like cute. The, They're pretty the thing cute. about I, I do love my cats. Uh, never liked cats before, but I like these ones. Um, but it it's like it's a step up on the like responsibility ladder, which is which I think is probably you Having know a pet? because like kids are like intense and there's a serious amount mm. of things that are required of you when you do that thing. So, but like cats, like I have to go home at least once every two days to feed the cats. Like you can't just go, oh yeah, I'll you know away. See, I feel like kids Don't would be less work. That. I'll be honest, I've got a dog. Um, and oh, when he was a puppy, that's the next step I was like, I'll cast. take a kid over this puppy right now because it's intense. Yeah. Maybe. And that, that's another thing that I think is not factored into like financial planning. People are like, oh, Puppies. we're going to get a dog. Yeah. Like they cost money. Mm, one you of know? my clients, one of my clients recently, uh, their dog ate like 27 like stones from the garden <laughs> and then I had to have like a full on operation. So it was like four and a half thousand dollars for oh, this thing. It's and, crazy. And then I got these other clients, poor things. They had this really old dog and it died and they were very upset. They had it for a long time. And then they got another, they got another, it's a lab, chocolate lab. And they paid it like it was expensive. These dogs are crazy. Dogs are crazy expensive these days. It was like a couple of grand or something for this dog. And now the dog's got a hip issue. It's just a puppy. Yeah. And then it's like it won't sit still for the x-ray, so they've got to like anesthetize the um, the dog so that they can do an x-ray, and it's like thousands of dollars, man. It's I like- think the only thing, like because I'm in advice, the second I got the puppy, I got insurance. So every time something's happened, like he's been attacked by a dog. Wait, wait the dog has insurance? You can have pet insurance. So Trauma any- insurance? No. It's Level like, premiums? It's or- <laughs> <laughs> There's a loading because he's too cute. <laughs> um, so he's got insurance. So every time something's happened to him, I've been able to claim on insurance, which has been really good. Right. But all my friends are like, insurance is bullshit. We're not getting it. It's like, well, you just had to fork out all this money because your dog ate a sock. <laughs> <laughs> or 27 stones. Yeah, 27 stones. I got insurance for my cat though and uh, it got attacked recently and it had it got an abscess on its face. It was 1000 bucks. And yeah. I, oh, here's the thing. got 300 bucks. Here though. is a thing. Do you just insure? Sure, one cat, but because they look exactly the same. <gasps> Damn, no, because they, they don't look. I think they have a thing. I think there's a, like, like a microchip, microchip thing. They might oh. test it. They might test it. I don't know. That's 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 a really sly move. I like that actually. That's financial planner. Damn, financial no, planner. that's not financial. That's <laughs> sneaky. That's, that's, that's sneaky. Wrong. Well, that's <laughs> not financial. To be plan. fair, financial planning is playing within the rules. But you you're sneaky. Like like for example, the withdrawal. I feel like that's insurance fraud. No, no that's no. actually unethical. <laughs> Okay, all right, yes. <laughs> You're a bad person. Okay. You're smart. 
but you're but dumb. a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so withdrawal and recontributions, for example, sneaky. No, no, <laughs> definitely sneaky. <laughs> no, yes, try to avoid tax. I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's our job. It's smart but sneaky. Smart and sneaky, yeah, and fraud. <laughs> At least that's ethical, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's next happening for XY, guys? Um, good question. Actually, we are swapping over because we um, sort of soft launch. We made a little bit of hoo-ha on launch, but we haven't really done much more to push it, which is our online training platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, we've been thinking about it, what is the best uh, user experience? And what we realized was currently all the all the interaction is behind a paywall. So you yep. have to pay $50 a month to look at anything that's within sort of this this uh, platform. So what we're going to do is uh, decouple um, an ongoing fee from, from the user and then the front page will just be all of the courses and then people just pay on demand. On demand per course. And then I think we'll probably, uh, as time goes on, we'll probably have a subscription model again, which is cheaper, I guess. But but at least, maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe. But but at least people aren't, because currently, yeah, yeah, you get to the front page and then you're just like, well, if I don't pay 50 bucks a month, yep. I can't look at anything else. And we're getting sort of, it's a growing amount of traffic that's going on to that website. So what we want to do is we actually, do you know what Udemy is? Yep. Udemy. Udemy is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're you like sure one it's of not those Udemy? people. It's Udemy. Like, Udemy. I love when Udemy. people get those names wrong. Did you just say oh. PayPal? Huh? <laughs> Did you just <laughs> PayPal get those? I think it's saying, yes. I definitely. said PayPal. Uh, have P-opal. you heard of that app Waze? I think it's PayPal. Yes. <laughs> I know someone that called it Wazy because there's an E on the end. Oh, oh you Wazy. <laughs> you Wazy. You Wazy girl. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, back to you and your story. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so currently. It's it's behind a paywall, and we want to change it to Udemy. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that it? You, no, yes. UD my. No, okay. mate, it's and a Y on the end. So we're going to change what? it to that online course, whatever yeah. you call it, and uh, yeah, people can pay whatever they want for whatever course, and people right. can charge whatever they want, right? So yeah. uh, at the moment, instead of everything being fifty dollars course, people might be able to make a thousand dollars course, or yeah, two thousand dollars course, or a ten thousand dollars course, or a, or a free course. Right, so we we kind of we want to step away from being in charge of valuing how much each course is, and then you know because we've got this professional year that's coming up, and no yeah. one's put their hand up and said we're in charge of the professional year yet, right? So we absolutely want to be prepared for for when Phasia comes out and says, okay, you've got to do this training and these tests and whatnot. We, we want to help facilitate that if possible, yeah. And uh, we just want to be the the, the platform that. Uh, this stuff is held on. Yeah. Um, but because of our personal lack of ability, we won't be the ones producing the content. Yes, absolutely. I think we definitely need some admin support stuff, staff on there. Yes. Oh, Hillary. Please. And, and, There's and, so many people. Like Mia Taylor, like she's an amazing advi- she's gun advisor now. Oh, no, but she was. Okay. Like where these people – they just have so much knowledge. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it, might, it might be an idea if, if you and uh, – Hillary. Hillary and Haley, trust me, the clients. I was like, what's your name again? <laughs> and Hillary, Hillary, Hillary yeah. if you and Hillary and maybe Mia, yeah. you, you guys could definitely create a course. I love that. Yeah. I would love that. And then yeah. charge whatever you want. One well, we got- million dollars. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know there was an app on the iPhone and it was called uh, Rich and Exclusive and it was $1,000 for a download and it got downloaded like a couple of times. On your phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're like, yay, Haley. I'm rich and exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> but can you believe anyone bought it? And it was, and he clicked on the button and it's like, congratulations, you're rich and exclusive. Oh, my gosh, that's all it is. It was nothing. It people was are dumb. That's Hell, mad. yeah, especially yeah. rich people. <laughs> no, that's exclusive people. So. Yes. <laughs> Only rich and rich exclusive. And exclusive. Yeah. Right. Red food, guys like red food. <laughs> <laughs> he's not rich, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, I've got no idea. He's not rich. <laughs> oh, come on. But he's got such nice shoes. And, uh, and his, dad, his dad's like Quincy Jones, What about isn't his it? hair? That's his it. Hair that would be expensive his... to maintain. Like, yeah. But his hair is his That, that point. would actually be expensive to maintain, though. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. He must have know. a lot of capital. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm thinking capital. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I think the um, I think that the changes to the XY site should be uh, quite cool. We had a bunch of people that were in there 
doing that. We've got some great feedback from the courses, but I think like Clay says, people there's that bit of a barrier there. So we do just want to break that down. Yeah, it makes sense. Also, you don't have to wait to do courses. Yeah, a lot of people like these are so good and I need CPD points. Why are you restricting me to one and only a handful mm. of CPD points per month? And we're like, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing uh, is because we've got so many awesome people out there in the community that um, – you know, would be fantastic to do a course or to create something like so. But we've previously been running with this four module structure and it's a month long thing. And we found a few people a bit hesitant about that, a right. bit scared about it. So, yeah. shout outs to all, all the awesome people out there. Yeah, um, I, th- I think we just sort of came at it a little bit too structured, which mm. is a real for, for XY that was a completely opposite way of we normally do things. And so now we're sort of opening it up to. Uh, I mean, let's face it, XY really works well when uh, when everyone else is talking louder than us. Definitely you. Well, XY is the community. Correct. When you think about it. And exactly. And if, if they're saying this is what we want, like. Exactly. And, and, and hopefully um, when, when we get around to it, people, many people are willing to create a course. Mm. So that's what we're hoping for. So we'll put you down then? Sure, because I have so much stuff to teach people. Oh. Um, well, I, I we just went through you and Hillary and Mia. I think yeah. that would be great. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's make like it happen. It. I like it. Yeah. So uh, top tips for Paris next time I'm there? Bell Tower, Notre Dame, for sure. That was one of the most mm. amazing experiences what, You went in the, in the Notre Dame? Yeah, you go in and you climb up the bell tower up to the top and you see the bell. That's cool. Do you get to ring the bell? No. <sighs> no one can be in the tower when the bell rings. You would be deaf. Like oh, your ears okay. would bleed. Isn't there, the isn't there someone doing it though? No. Oh, I don't know. The hunchback. Yeah. No, well, you know that was not a real <laughs> the hunchback is not real. When you say not real, Cosimodo do you mean Cosimodo was yeah. a fictional character? Okay, but as in plus it's discrimination. I'm pretty sure it's not politically correct. Just to say it's, it's like scoliosis. Hunch- okay. It's just someone with scoliosis. Oh, it's, a, I th- it's a you know yeah. high performing individual with scoliosis, right? Or a bell ringer. A bell ringer. Oh. So you don't have to have You've a hunchback. You've got all hunchback. the words. You don't one, have to be a hunchback. One thing, I, Demi. one thing I realized when you're in Paris is I stood on the Eiffel Tower and then I realized I couldn't look at the Eiffel Tower. So I was like, hmm. Yeah. There's one thing in this Paris skyline that's missing, the thing that I'm standing on. Yeah. That's the, like, in London there's so many things you can go up high on and it's like which one is the best one to be the highest on to look at everything. So. And which one was? Oh, I wish I had gone on the, up the Sky Tell Garden. No, so Big Ben's been under reconstruction or renovations for ages, not um, done until right. like 2020. Right. We need our maintenance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> it's important. Got to be looking our best. Okay. Um, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Which is the best high thing in London to look at? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, the eye? Was it the eye? Was yeah. that good? Oh, uh, no, I didn't go on the eye. Oh, what? No, I know. Um, I went up on a few high things up there. What was it? It was. They were all good. Right. Let's okay. go with that. Great answer. <laughs> Great answer. And, and, and your mum was with you? Yeah, mum, dad, my sister. Fantastic. Sh- shout out to Jenny Pierce, uh, social media entrepreneur extraordinaire. Marketing consultant of Actually, the Actually, legit question. Does mm. your mum help with what you guys are doing there at Caboodle and Zaptitude? Um, not with us at Caboodle. Um, I feel like that would be a conflict of interest because I'd just be like stealing info from mum, stealing info from Peter. Like Absolutely. Then you become the brains in the middle and, and create just, the ultimate business. And I feel like, yeah, the the – Power force that is Peter and the brainstorm that is Jenny, like it would just be like a glitch in the matrix if they just like or the hadron collider if they just <laughs> smush together. So plus she's got her like she's heaps busy doing her thing, so I'm not gonna bother her. No, no, fair enough. I'll try and figure it out myself. I'll just go on U Demi, right? There's a few courses on there. U D my. No. It's with a Y, man. Yeah, okay. Y. You do my. I will like my like the word my. I will put uh, money down that it's U Demi. Oh? Huh? It's U Demi. Yeah. It's U Demi. It's you, Demi. It's definitely you to me. You'd my. So when people when 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 Caboodle starts its marketing funnel, mm-hmm. um, how many email and how many like literally how big is it, that email chain? Yep. And is it all one path or in the emails? Are there sort of buttons or, or options to choose which then trigger different chains of, re- yeah, of cause, reactions? Yeah, because we use Infusionsoft, uh, the 
it's like a Goosebumps novel, like choose your own adventure really. So uh, we've got uh, a letter that goes out to clients because they're um, clients that are transferred from other advisors. Yes. Um, so they'll get a letter to say we're Caboodle. Uh, they got a phone call and then after that they'll get a, le- a email, sorry, that then has links to find out more about Caboodle, book a time to speak with an advisor, fill out a risk profile, um, a whole bunch of different stuff. So it goes from there and then we've got, a, I guess, a nurturing campaign where we're in touch with them regularly. So um, off the back of every phone call is an email so they can always book another time or um, shoot us back with more questions, uh, fill out, as I said, fill out risk profile So it's, um it's really totally dictated by the client. Um, and because we're using Fusionsoft, if they don't respond, um, they'll, there can easily be a follow-up email or a follow-up phone call. Um, it's all really automated. Uh, so it makes it really easy for us to look after so many clients um, because it's all triggered by the automation of Infusionsoft. Do you do the any of the Infusionsoft? Do you get involved in that? Yes. Yeah, so um, Peter originally set it up. Yeah. And since I've been there, I look after it. Oh wow. So um, it's 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 learnable, but it it can be complex. But my brain loves that stuff. Like a lot of people don't like X Plan. Mm. I loved X Plan. Wow. I, loved, I think that's the very first time I've ever I heard someone say that. I love setting up all the threads, all of that stuff. Like wow. I, I remember going to Iris training um, for some of the modeling and I was like, I so said, how do you um, model like a property purchase in an SMS? If they're like, we don't know. I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Why were you um, training though? Because I was with my team. Right. And also because there was a whole bunch of issues with their modeling a while ago, so like mm. years ago. So we went there because we're like, are we getting this wrong or they don't know how to do it? So, uh-huh. um, yeah, I used uh-huh. I, That's I, the I inner compliance officer, I feel. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I do miss that. Damn, that was fun being a compliance officer. I felt like I was like the police officer of financial advice. Oh, the sheriff. <laughs> I just intense. would walk into work with a little badge each day. <laughs> <laughs> and a, and a yeah, gunslinger. <laughs> and, then, guns. and what percentage of the clients actually do come in and, and meet with, with Peter or yourself? Zero. Really? Yeah. So we do have face-to-face clients um, that are more complex that Peter has dealt with in building Caboodle. Um, but a lot of these passive clients that we take over, it's all over the phone. Um, I do a lot of like video calls and things like that, um, but it's all f- what, do you with Zoom? passive clients. Or? Uh, with the passive clients, yeah. yeah. So I've I've used Skype, I've used Zoom, Facebook Messenger videos. Wow, all right. It's really easy because uh, you don't have to connect on Facebook. It's just Messenger. Um, right. So all all different. And the the most recent portfolio that we took over, uh, they're based in Victoria, and pretty much every phone call they'd be like, "Oh, but we we like to sit down and." and you know, be with, uh, being with an advisor, and I'm like, that's that's fine if that's what you want to do. I feel confident that I can look after you over the phone and and via um, video. And after the conversation, they they feel pretty fine that they can too. Like they don't feel necessarily the need, and and that's probably because it's not that um, full hol- like holistic complex advice. It is more focused on just super or just insurance or just investment. Hmm. Um, I don't so- know that though that that's the case. Like I've got clients in – I've got a few clients in Singapore. Yeah. Um, I've got one in like in France as well uh, and these guys are – or I've met – yeah, I've met probably half of them now because when they come back to Australia, they're generally Aussie expats and we'll just catch up for a coffee or something. But I've still got some that I've never yeah. met. I've yeah. got a client in Melbourne that – I haven't been able. I've been to Melbourne a few times. Haven't been able to connect with it. I'm going down there in a couple of months. So I'll, I'll connect with it then. But yeah. we're doing f- like it's all full, full scale holistic advice. advice. I find I think it's better the yep. in person. I prefer it in person because it's like you you get a better sense for somebody else. I think, but um, but I think it's still definitely uh, not not a not a huge barrier. Oh, it's it's not a huge barrier for some people. It is surprisingly the some of the older clients I deal with. They're so fine. They're so on email. They're like electronic signatures. I'll send them an SOA and schedule a week later to give them a call. They've already sent the authority back. And I'm like, I didn't get to explain it yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I guess either they've got the time or it was just simple to read. They, or that, that's just, what, they, that stuff just no good. one reads SOAs. It could be that as well. That's just not do, do you that. do like an accompanying video or something like that? Yeah. So we... We that's what we're trying to build out is some more videos, uh, like with face to face videos. A lot of the videos that we've created are um, 
screen recordings of keynote presentations and things yes. um, that are more educational just because they're cheap and <laughs> quick and easy to yeah, build. Um, but, yeah, the goal is to create some more videos. I just got to sit my mug down in front of a camera and get that sorted. <laughs> oh, and, and do you do an explainer video for an SOA? No, so it's all – we'll chat to them over the phone. Okay. So our SOA, we're self-licensed, so we have do have flexibility with what we can put in there. And because we do a lot of educational stuff up front, um, it does mean that it doesn't have to be as complex in explaining things. Do you, do, do you use pictures at all? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of imagery. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're looking at a new tool uh, to present an SOA that is basically it's like a website. Mm. Um, and one of the things wow. we trialed for just like a strategy paper, so an engagement letter, was for each of their goals, picking a picture um, and aligning it with that. And people they just loved it. I remember. I think, that, I think Corey does that. Wasley Adverse down in yeah, down in Melbourne. Yeah. I think he's got yeah. a website thing. Yeah, he showed me showed me one of his things. It looks uh, amazing. I think I think I think that's what Patty does with um, Spark as well. Mm. It makes a difference. I think it just breaks it up as well. Um, you know, everyone's on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, so they're used to like highly visual things. So it makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> you do it all in Instagram stories. Yes. SOA. P- Peter, Imagine Snapchatting in SOA. Oh, that would be, be wow. Dog filter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Peter actually put me onto a, an, an app a long time ago where you can take a picture and then put a quote over this and yeah. then style it. And I started just using that as uh, as as the goals that my clients were telling me that they wanted, yeah. and just putting that in in the SOA as like one what you know one page, and it was just pictures uh, and and quotes over the top. And someone said, you know, I wanted to go to Rome, then you just get a picture of Rome and yeah. I want to go to Rome, put that over the top and I'm like, and this is what you want Wanted. in life. Yeah. And they go, that's what I want in life. And I'm like, exactly. And that's where we're going to get there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many books and uh, speakers out there that have said like if you draw out your goals and have a dream board and all that sort of stuff, it's you're envisioning it, you're more likely yeah. to make it happen. So it's just all in that same vein. Yeah, even even renaming the savings account to the Rome account yeah. was the biggest uptick in like – yeah, i would never forget how the, effective that was. The flip side of that is calling the spending account the spending account because you're like, I can spend it. Yeah, but that's, I think the, that's the idea. Yeah, that's the that's point. The idea. Yeah, but within reason. No, you no, just, no, no. You're, you're supposed in. to spend it all you, every you, week. You got to like absolutely smash, uh, smash the entire amount that's in there. Okay, I'll do that then. I actually, uh, I was reading a, a blog the other day, and and they were saying that when you when you tell your goals, you're actually less likely to achieve them, like especially goals yes. like uh, physical fitness. And it's actually Mark Menson. Um, yeah. And he was talking about because when you – when you would say that you're going to do it, then everyone goes, oh, that's Expectation. mad. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm awesome. Yeah. And then you just don't do yeah. it because you've already got your rush. So he said mm-hmm. you should reframe your goals in a way to say, I want you to push me to do this thing, to make sure I do it like that way because yeah. it doesn't give you the same. One right. of my good friends is, is said the exact same thing that you, you know, everyone goes, oh, I'm going to go buy this house. And you're like, okay, great. And then it doesn't – people kind of get let down because it didn't quite happen. So some one of my friends has said, you know, you keep it to yourself. Like you keep it a bit of a mystery and then you've only got to impress yourself. I like the mentality where you tell everyone, everyone's like, yes, you yeah, can do it. But I think there's definitely um, – Like the, a specific house or the, – no, like the the blog that Gonna he follows. A house. Have you got of her Mr. Mon- Mr. Money Mustache? Yes. Yeah. Must- I think Mustache. it's pronounced Mustache. Mustache. You don't get to tell me words. <laughs> I'm the word lady. <laughs> Mustache. Am I saying it wrong? No. Mustache. Oh, yes, you're yeah. definitely Mustache. saying it wrong. Mustache. Mustache. M O U. Mustache. Moose. Mush. Maybe Mush. if you're from Germany. <laughs> It's mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this is what happens when you when GI? you put yeah. shit on people yeah, for, for saying pronouncing words wrong. you to be wrong. Oh uh, okay, we'll see. But yes, yes, pretty very, sure. very familiar. So yeah, that blog. Um, I'm pretty sure it was on there. He said that yeah, it's it's not about over announcing your goals too much to people and you know spruiking it. You've got mm. to keep it in and not keep it in, but um. Yeah, not be over the top with telling people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that guy because he's got a nice higher cut, like on his higher. Oh, my God. I don't know what that is. Haircut. He's trying to be cool. <laughs> don't look at him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> These jokes, my goodness. Okay, well, uh, Haley, it's been awesome to have you. If, if someone me. if someone wants to uh, reach out to you, uh, you what why where would they find you? Uh, so I'm on Facebook, Very LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, you can pop me an email, Haley S at kabootlefs dot com dot au. Excellent. Um, or just like yell really loudly. Just as you're driving through North Sydney. Yeah. Hello. Or drive really fast in a car and stop at a set of lights and toot your horn. Done. (laughs) I'm going to do that next time I'm driving through. All right. (laughs) Lovely to have you on. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.